Not likely. Also, you have to be kind of arrogant not to believe in angels because almost every culture does and every religion in the world. And whatever the reasons, whatever the authority behind it, if 95% of all human beings who have ever lived have thought something, it's very probably true. And if it's not, then you are one of the few very small coterie of people who is in on the truth and all these people are hopelessly stupid. That might be true, but you gotta be a little arrogant to believe that. My main question today is not so much what angels are, but what they do, how they interact with our lives. I'm not a scholar. I'm not terribly interested in scholarly stuff. Uh, that's why I've written a lot of books instead of just a few. If I were a responsible scholar, I'd, I'd wait 20 years after doing library research before I publish something. Uh, but fortunately, I'm not, I don't have the mind of a scholar, and, and therefore I'm sort of impatient with dull scholarly stuff. So one of my favorite philosophers is William James, the American pragmatist. Uh, he tells a story once of himself and two other philosophers out on a walking trip, uh, and they sat down on a log and watched two squirrels chase each other around the tree. And each squirrel was just as fast as the other squirrel, so they, they never caught up with each other, but they were always going back and forth. Philosopher A said to philosopher B, you see that? Mm -hmm. Said philosopher B, uh, each squirrel circles the tree, right? Right. Does each squirrel also circle around the other squirrel? Well, yes, of course, said philosopher B. No, said philosopher A, because none of the squirrels is ever at rest. They're always in motion. So they're both circling around a common invisible center. No, 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 no. S circumambulation, walking around, is a transitive relationship. No, it's an intransitive relationship. And they argued in big logical terms for about an hour. At the end of the argument, each one stalked off in opposite directions saying, you're a hopeless fool, you know nothing about logic. William James sat there alone and said, I think I have just seen the history of Western philosophy. <laughs> Most of the questions that great philosophers and scholars ask aren't questions that are going to make a difference to your life. And that's James's definition of a meaningful question. A meaningful question, a question that's worth spending time on, is a question whose answer is gonna make some difference to your life, to your experience. So I'd like to focus on that aspect of angels. What difference do angels make to your life? Well, let's start with the question, what difference does faith in angels make to your life? What difference does it make whether you believe in angels or not? And my answer is, you might mean three very different things by believing. You might just have an opinion. You answer a Gallup poll, yes, I believe there are angels. Second, that might involve personal trust. Or thirdly, it might be a religious faith. You submit to them, you worship them, you adore them. That third thing is idolatry. The first thing makes very little difference. It's the thing in the middle, the trust, that makes the difference. Uh, my cat, she's a rag doll. She's a scaredy cat, but very affectionate. Uh, doesn't feel secure unless she's near me. The farther away she goes from me when I take her out into the yard, the, scaredy, the more scaredy cat she is. Well, that's wise, because she's a little unprotected animal. Well, I think that's how we should feel about the angels. Uh, we have a right to feel a kind of comfort and trust and security when we're in God's will and we know that the angels are doing his will and his will is our will. We're in the right relationship. When we're out of whack, we have a right to feel uncomfortable. So the question, do angels comfort you or not? Well, they're like Jesus. They comfort the afflicted and they afflict the comfortable. Whenever the apostles were up, he brought them down. Whenever they were down, he brought them up. That's what they needed. And since they're his angels, they help do his work. So that's what they do to us. So the answer to another question, do angels give you comfort, is, well, it depends. Sometimes we don't need it. Sometimes we need the opposite. Sometimes they need a good kick in the pants. Angels are good kickers. 
They can, uh, they can punt. But they can also comfort. The feeling that I think we should rightly get uh, from our belief that there are angels who take care of us as we take care of pets is the same feeling as a little child gets in a great big house that is the family house. Big house is scary, a lot of unknown nooks and crannies, it might be ghosts in the attic, but if it's daddy's house and daddy's friends are in the house too, well you can trust those friends too because you can trust daddy. And of course, Jesus' word for God that he uses, Abba, means daddy. It's the intimate word. And therefore, you can trust his angels. And yet, that doesn't mean that it's dull. A big house, uh, hidden staircases, mysteries, something alien and other that we don't fully understand. That's the nature of the whole universe. There's, there's only three philosophies of life. One is Shakespeare's, which he puts into the mouth of Hamlet when he says to Horatio, after Horatio can hardly believe his eyes, having seen Hamlet's father's ghost, because Horatio was skeptical of ghosts, Horatio, there are more things in heaven and earth that are dreamed of in your philosophies. That's one philosophy. The second one is that there are fewer things in heaven and earth that are dreamed of in your philosophies. The earth is a duller place than we think. Science explains it all. There's nothing but blind, dumb, stupid atoms bumping into each other forever. And everything else is a myth. Or thirdly, there are exactly the same number of things in heaven and earth, that is objective reality, as in our philosophies, that is our beliefs. You've got to be very arrogant to believe that. So which is the biggest world, the real world or your mental world? Well, all the great thinkers in history and all, certainly all the great artists in history have believed the first philosophy. And if there are angels, then the first philosophy is true. The difference that angels make is greater, therefore, not less than what we think. Certainly they're greater than what we see. We can't see them at all. But we usually think of angels as you know, helpers. They come around during emergencies. But why do you think this morning, when you didn't feel like praying, you prayed anyway? And why after three minutes when you were bored and you wanted to give it up, you said, no, I'm going to go back and do 10 minutes more? And where in the world did you get that really good idea to say that particular word to that particular person who it turned out exactly needed it? And where in the world did you get that very creative idea for starting up that company or creating that work of art that you, that you did, don't know where it came from? The angels. When you die, you're gonna meet your guardian angel. And then you'll see all the things your guardian angel did for you during the, your lifetime. And you're gonna say, that was you all the time. And he'll just smile. The Mona Lisa smile. In fact, I think, I strongly suspect that if we saw the difference that our angels made, and if we saw the difference that every little prayer of ours ever made to all the people that it's gonna affect down through the centuries, we would be so overwhelmed with responsibility, we would never be able to get up off our knees for the rest of our life. So God compassionately keeps us in, in ignorance.